stuck in the trunk of your car, stay calm. All cars are supposed to be equipped with an emergency latch to help open the trunk from the inside in the unlikely case it happens. These latches are so well thought out that they can be opened by people of all ages. More so, handles are designed to glow in the dark, too. You can even pull them with the mouth if there's not enough wiggle room to use your hands. Never mind how you ended up in the trunk in the first place. Moving on. If you're ever working with needle and thread, remember you don't need to stick the needle directly into the spool. You may end up losing the needle altogether, not to mention you can easily hurt your fingers. A lot of modern sewing kits these days come with a designated place for safeguarding the needles. It's located at the bottom part of the thread spool. You'll just need to pull it out. It's even made to hold multiple sewing needles at a time. Disposable ballpoint pens come with a little secret of their own. Did you ever notice that in some of them, there's a small hole in the plastic part? It's actually a rudimentary ventilation system. It's supposed to let the ink easily make it to the tip of the pen. Okay, I know it's in the name, but you really don't need to shake the seasoning shaker to get any product out. Don't believe me? Hey, you're not the only one. Go grab your favorite seasoning bottle out of your pantry. If it has one of those removable plastic caps, it's perfect for the experiment. Instead of shaking the bottle, try holding it from the plastic cap while it's upside down. Now, gently twist the bottle from side to side and, before you know it, you get some gorgeously flowing seasoning without having to wiggle the shaker and make a mess all over the stove. On the same note, hmm, most salt and pepper shakers should have ridges on the bottom of the glass portion. In case you get any seasoning stuck in there, place the bottom of the salt shaker against the bottom of the pepper shaker and wiggle it around so the ridges click with each other. The seasoning should easily pour out now without you having to open the bottle. In colder weather, you often have so many clothing layers on you that you can hardly feel the purse or back straps on your shoulder anymore. Not to mention how fast they can slide off. Some jackets come with a built-in solution for that, in the form of a small tab on the shoulder with either a hook or a button. It's meant to be opened and closed comfortably, so you can keep your purse in place at any time. You're most likely using it merely to peel the skin of potatoes, carrots, or cucumbers. But you can use your vegetable peeler for chopping fine strips of onion as well. Just cut the onion into quarters vertically and then start slicing. This might also help out with those embarrassing onion tears. Most people miss this one, but should you ever have a closer look at your toothpaste tube, you will surely see some sort of coloring there, either a dot or a block. Colors can vary. They can be black, green, red, or even blue. These color spots are actually meant to help the assembly machines back at the toothpaste factory. They recognize when and where these machines need to cut the toothpaste tubes and proceed to fold them for packaging. For most types of footwear, if there's anything that seems a bit out of place, always know that it's there for a reason. Most manufacturers don't put extra items on shoes just for fun. It would definitely be a waste of time and resources. For footwear, like boots, for example, there's often a small loop at the top back of the shoe. It's there to help you when you need to put the shoe on, since you can quickly pull on it. Plus, you can also hang the shoe somewhere, most likely to dry, since most boots are meant to be worn in the colder weather. Now, I've been guilty at least once of overdressing with a bunch of layers just so I won't need to jam everything in my check-in bag. But does it become a problem when you actually have to get seated? What do you do with your coat or your jacket? Well, have a closer look next time you board a plane on the seat in front of you. The hook that keeps the tray table upright can double as a jacket hook. As long as you don't need to have any meals while in the air, you're good to go. Now, most mascaras expire within 3-6 to six months, I'm told, depending on the manufacturer. But you can help speed up that process if you're not careful enough. Continuously pumping the mascara wand, trying to mix in the product, actually pushes more air into the tube. This can make it dry much faster, and you evidently won't get the desired results with it anymore. There's an easy way to check if your mascara is still good enough to use. If you don't hear a popping noise when you take the brush out, you may very well need to go get yourself a new mascara tube. 
Now I know we're living in the era of Bluetooth-connected devices, but for better quality sound, they still recommend using headphones that connect via audio jacks. Remember seeing black ridges on those jacks? They aren't there just to make them fit when you plug them into your phone or laptop. Made out of a special insulating material, these bands are meant to guard the wires when sound is being transmitted. Based on the number of bands, you can figure out which end goes where. Some empty space under noodles in a cup doesn't mean the company producing them wants to cheat you out of a full portion. No, no. It's a manner of keeping the noodles intact during their transportation. It also helps with the circulation of hot water that is poured over the products before you can enjoy them. The V-shaped neckline was initially designed to serve a bunch of objectives. First, as a way of prolonging the life of the garment that would maintain its shape over the years. It's also there to fit your head through the shirt in case it needs some stretching. This way, it ensures a snugger grip around the neck. Lastly, it helps absorb sweat in case you're wearing the shirt while exercising. Now, it's not necessarily a custom anymore, but you may have stumbled upon a dinner jacket with an additional mysterious pocket on the right side. Turns out, this pocket was used by men to easily reach their train tickets, since most of them had to travel to work every day. It helped them keep their jacket buttoned up, but also benefited from the use of a pocket. Now it's only added as a decoration, and it doesn't serve an actual purpose anymore. Speaking of things we don't use these days, or at least for their initial purpose, did you know Play-Doh was originally a cleaning product? In the 1920s, the market was in need of a product that could help them wipe the wallpapered areas around coal-burning furnaces. The recipe for what we now know as Play-Doh was thus invented. It was manufactured in white only and was supposed to clean wallpaper by being rolled back and forth over the dirt. It was only later, in the 1940s, that new products for cleaning wallpaper were brought up, and Play-Doh was redirected toward another area of the market. Now, while I enjoy a nice piece of toast for breakfast, isn't it pesky to have to clean out the toaster? Well, not anymore, since I recently found out that toasters have a slide or a panel at the bottom that helps get rid of all those annoying breadcrumbs easily. Now, there used to be a time when you could only have access to video games by inserting cartridges in your console of choice. These tiny objects gave many doctors a lot of headaches. People soon started popping up in hospitals after swallowing small game cartridges, especially the younger generation. Nintendo, the company that manufactures the majority of these devices, had to come up with a creative solution to prevent these accidents. So these days, Nintendo Switch cartridges are purposely coated with specific chemicals that can leave a really bad, bitter taste in the mouth. Not that I'd, you know, recommend you ever try and taste for yourself. <laughs> okay, today I'll show you things you've never seen and tell you stuff you never knew. Wow, all in one video! What a bargain! For example, these soda found stations in fast food restaurants. We all see the nice side of it, but have you ever wondered where all this soda comes from? Let me take you behind the scenes. Ta-da! Turns out it's a pile of boxes with tubes. So when the drink runs out, the employees change the box and plug the tube back in. Okay, let's peek into a couple more places where we normally don't belong. <laughs> this is, for example, what you will see if you cut the screen of a Mac open. And here's what's hidden behind the dryers in a public laundromat. Today, 4 out of 5 households in the US have a dryer. But they weren't so widely accessible when they first appeared in the 1950s because they were way too expensive for the average homeowner. Now, grocery shopping isn't an uncommon practice, and we all have walked past dairy fridges a million times. But have you ever wondered what's behind them? Turns out, they're just shelves, and store employees stack the products from the other side. It makes perfect sense, but I never imagined it like this. Now, this photo shows what's behind the elevator buttons. Obviously, a bunch of cords. The buttons are all wired to a computer that manages the elevator. How does the computer know where the elevator is at a particular time? Well, there are several possible systems, but the most common one is a long vertical tape in the shaft with a series of holes. A sensor counts the number of holes that are passed, and that's how the location is determined. Okay, 
There are a couple of common things we all know, but the purpose of which remains a mystery to most. So let me share these secrets with you. Those metal rivets on jeans have been there from the very beginning. Jacob Davis, the iconic man who made the first pair of jeans, added copper rivets to places where pants are most likely to rip. Today, they have more of a decorative and distinctive purpose since they are a traditional attribute of the jeans everyone knows of. Now, I'll bet you know there are extra loops on some shoes. No, they're not for sweat or ventilation. Those are extra loops for laces, just like other loops you use. But they're there to tie your shoe around the ankle to prevent your foot from moving aside. That's especially helpful if you're hiking and ascending and descending hills and trails. Now, have you ever noticed those half-belt thingies many coats and jackets have at the back? Turns out they first appeared on oversized military jackets, so the extra fabric could be collected on the back and the person doesn't stumble when working. Today, those belts are only added for the sake of style and tradition. Most clothing items you buy come with a small bag of fabric or a button, or both. These are actually not useless. Buttons obviously can be replaced if you lost the original one. Pieces of fabric can serve two purposes. You can patch up the hole, but the main purpose is to provide you with a sample of cloth, so you can use it to test different washing products on it and see what happens to the fabric. Now, pom-poms on woolen hats. Did you know that sailors were wearing hats with pom-poms in the 18th century to protect their heads in case they accidentally whacked them? Regular people were wearing them in Scotland, and the color of the pom-pom signified the person's social status. People got back to wearing hats with those cute decorative items during the Great Depression. They're made of spare yarn, so it was a cheap way to decorate your hat. Now, if you haven't noticed, some sidewalks have little plates with bumps on them. Most people don't pay much attention to them, but they're very important for visually impaired people. It signals a slope that then leads to a crosswalk. Also, several patterns signal different things. Have you noticed that the icon of a gas tank on car dashboards has a little arrow next to it? Well, the arrow has a purpose. It points at the side of the car where the gas tank is located. Very useful for forgetful people, like me, who constantly wonder which side it is on, and also for those who drive rentals once in a while. The answer is right in front of your eyes. If you can't find the arrow on your panel, then the fuel hose on the icon indicates the side instead. Now, on the back of many makeup and hygiene products, you'll find this symbol with a marking like 6M, 12M, and 24M. This is the number of months this product can serve you before you should toss it out. You might know that whistles work perfectly fine even if they don't have that ball inside. And yet, they have it. But why? Even though there's a sound without the ball, the noise it creates is very flat, and it's not distinguishable enough. When the whistle has a ball inside, then it starts moving with every blow, indicating different pitches and making the noise more noticeable. Lollipop sticks have those squared holes on the end of their sticks for a reason, too. When the candy is put on the stick, some of it goes into the hole, fixating the candy part. This way, the candy ball or whatever shape is less likely to fall off the stick. Yeah, it's a bummer when that happens. Measuring tapes have that little metal stud on the end. Most people know that you can use it to stick it to the side of the surface you're measuring. But it's not the only cool thing about it. Look, there's also a small slot. And this slot can be used to hang it on a nail. Again, to free your hands and keep measuring. The bottom of the end of the tape has a ridged edge. It'll help you make a mark if you don't have a marking tool with you. Have you ever wondered why the tape's blade is curved? Well, it helps to keep it rigid when extended. Pay a closer look at the blade. Apart from numbers and markings, there are also black diamonds. Those are there every 12.2 inches, and they're useful for construction workers to space engineering joists. They can also be useful for you if you want to hang something heavy, for example. The diamond will mark the exact center of a stud, which is placed 16 inches apart from one another. And you can drill something to that center to make sure whatever you hang is safely attached. Now, most coins have ridges, and this is the legacy of the olden days. You see, back in the day, all coins were linked to a silver standard. The amount of silver used in a coin was proportionate to the value of the coin. 
so, the more actual silver was used to make the coin, the higher its value was. Hi ho, silver! Do you remember the Lone Ranger? Silver was the name of his horse. Eh, never mind. Anyway, all the coins had precious metal in them, and some people started shaving <laughs> off a little bit of silver from it. It wasn't noticeable on one, but if done on several, people could get quite a bit of that precious metal. So, to prevent fraud, the edges were made with ridges for security reasons. So, if someone attempted to shave it off, the ridges would disappear and no one would accept that coin anymore. Smart! Today, no one makes coins out of silver. The coins just represent the value. But the ridges are kind of a cultural heritage now. And finally, a typical plastic milk jug often has inverted circles on one or more of the sides. Not like alien crop circles, this dimple is there to make the jug more resistant and to prevent it from erupting in case the jug falls on the floor. The dimple gives some more space for the liquid to expand. Also, as the expiration date approaches, the microbes in the milk start to expel some gases. As there are more of them trapped inside, the pressure in the jug is rising. The dimple takes care of the expansion and prevents the jug from exploding. And the cows are utterly delighted that their hard work is not wasted. You're trying on a pair of jeans, a dress, or a jacket, and are about to dig your hand into the pocket when you realize there's no depth to it. The pocket is simply not there. But why would anyone create pockets you can't put anything in? And uh, <clears throat> now would be a good time to pick your iPhone up from off the floor. Well, the reason for fake pockets is simple. If a clothing item has a specific cut or shape, pockets may spoil it. They can alter the item's shape, either in the warehouse or already on the retail rack. The solution? Getting rid of pockets in key areas. Plus, fake pockets are obviously cheaper, and they don't get stretched out. Interestingly, this practice goes back to the 17th century. That's when pockets were actually removable. They resembled small bags, and women, for example, could move them from one outfit to another. Unfortunately, it was also very convenient for pickpockets. They could grab such a pocket and run off with it. Then, clothes became more streamlined, and slim pockets started to be sewn right into them instead of attachable bags. This was believed to make the shape of a person's silhouette more alluring. But soon, slimmer skirts came into fashion, and pockets went out of it and people started using handbags instead. These days, most pockets are real, but some of them are still fake. So how can we make sure that we don't actually turn a fake pocket into a hole thinking it's a real one? Well, first of all, take a look at the stitching along the edge of the pocket, where it's supposed to open up. If you see a single loose thread, just snip a piece of it and start pulling gently. If the pocket is real, the thread will easily come out. But if you feel that the stitching won't budge, most likely you have a faux pocket on your hands. If this is the case, just leave it be. Now let's move on to some other everyday objects that may be hiding some secrets. For example, those lines on some kinds of chips. For one thing, they help with the distribution of spices and seasonings. In other words, all those substances that make your chips taste like cheese are mostly stored inside the lines. Plus, the lines make chips crunchier. Highlighters are filled with a special semi-transparent fluorescent ink that can glow in dim light. Yellow and light green hues are the most popular because they don't prevent you from seeing the text after black and white photocopying. Photocopiers perceive yellow and light green marks as almost non-existent and don't print them. Now, back in the day, the first jeans had one problem. Workers and miners, who were the original jeans wearers, put too much pressure on the poor piece of clothing. As a result, the seams couldn't withstand the stress and tore. So, tiny metal studs were invented to prevent this from happening. Most metallic zippers have a hidden lock inside them. That's why you shouldn't leave the zipper handle in an upward position. When you pull it downwards, it automatically locks. It's all thanks to several tiny grooves hidden underneath the handle. Now, about those horizontal lines on plastic bottles. They help hold bottles up. Some bottles are produced from soft plastic. Without the lines, they wouldn't keep their shape. Instead, they would twist easily or even break. Bath foam isn't only for fun or a nice smell. 
It helps regulate the temperature, too. The bubbles keep the water hot, and you can enjoy your bath a bit longer, with or without your rubber ducky. Ever notice that layer of clear liquid and gel pens? It's called the ink follower or stopper fluid. The gel in such pens contains pigment particles dissolved in a polymer solution. The gel should be thick enough to keep the pigment particles suspended, but also thin enough to flow first onto the ball and then the paper. The main task of the stopper fluid is to be a barrier to prevent the gel from evaporating or leaking out. Without this transparent fluid, your gel pen wouldn't function. The fluid always stays in one position and doesn't get dissolved with the gel. Neither does it move backward or flow out of the pen. The holes in the bottoms of your earphones allow air to circulate up and through the speakers. It allows to increase low frequencies, making the bass sound deeper. The quality of the sound also becomes much better. Some plastic milk containers have dents on their sides. Try as they might, they just cannot park without some damage. Nah, I made that up. These dents serve several purposes. For one thing, when milk spoils, this process usually causes swelling and high-pressure buildup inside the container. Oh boy, that's when the dent comes in handy. It pops out and doesn't let the jug blow up. Plus, if you ever decide to freeze the milk, it will expand like any other liquid. And then again, the indentation will pop out and prevent the container from breaking inside your freezer. That's a good thing. Airplane windows have rounded edges, and that's a crucial safety measure. It prevents aircraft accidents. Weak spots are usually situated in the corners. If airplane windows were square or rectangular, each of them would have four potential weak spots. Under pressure, they would collapse. If you look closely at a tram's overhead lines, you'll see that its contact wires zigzag back and forth instead of going in a straight line. The thing is that all trams have pantographs attached to their roofs. The upper part of the pantograph is gradually worn down by the overhead wire and eventually needs to be replaced. To wear it down evenly, the wire is not installed strictly along the tram's path but in zigzag patterns. As the tram moves, the pantograph slides along the wire and it wears down evenly. You might have wondered why some gas cans have two holes with caps, one bigger and one smaller. Before, I thought that the little hole was used when you poured something into a smaller container. But Mm. I was wrong. A very infrequent occasion. In reality, you're supposed to uncap it before you pour the gas inside the bigger hole to prevent it from glugging and spilling on your clothes and on the ground. Most of the buttonholes on a shirt are vertical, but the top, and sometimes bottom ones, are horizontal. The reason is simple. These two buttons slip out more often than others. Luckily, producers have found the solution that can prevent these buttons from slipping out. Horizontal buttonholes. What engineering? Buttons tend to slip out less from such buttonholes. Stick sachets of sugar or salt are easier to open than many people think. There's no need to tear off one of the ends. The right way is actually to tear them down the middle. Some boots have loops sticking out on the back. Their main purpose is to help you pull your shoes on easier. Just tug on the loop while you're pushing your heel into the boot. You can also use these loops to hang your boots on a hook when they're dirty or when you want to dry them after washing. Or you can run your laces through the loop if you want to tie them around your ankle. When you're on board the plane, you might spot a little triangle over your seat. Such triangles show the flight crew the best spots to check the plane's flaps through the window, just in case they're flapping. If your shoes are really slippery, just take a bit of sandpaper and rub it on the soles for better traction. They'll become more grippy, and you'll be able to wear them out in the rain. Now, if they get too wet, they might turn gripey, but that's only if you have talking shoes. If you drill several holes at the bottom of your garbage can, putting in and taking out trash bags will become much easier. You won't have any problems with suction. You can usually find some silica gel in bags, shoes, and many other things you buy. This shell absorbs excess moisture. Don't throw it away. Each time your shoes get wet, put a few packets of silica gel inside. The thermos wasn't actually invented to keep your coffee warm. It was made by a Scottish scientist who just wanted a safe place to put his chemicals at a stable temperature. So he took two bottles 
put the smaller one inside the bigger one and vacuumed out the air between them. Well, anyway, thanks for the hot coffee. Have you ever wondered what these extra holes at the top of your running shoes are for? They're designed so that you can tie the shoes in multiple different ways. That's useful when you want to compensate for things such as a bad stride or even a damaged toe. Plus, you can change the look of your shoes the way you prefer. Many people use a dust jacket of their book as a bookmarker. No problem with that, it will save your book from bent page corners. But the primary purpose of a dust cover is to keep the book safe from distortions. For instance, if you spill juice or drop some of the food on your book while reading it. The Tic Tac dispenser has this little groove on its top, so you can dispense only one Tic Tac at a time. Even though, let's be honest here, nobody does that. Most of us just spill a whole bunch at once and then we wiggle all those extra Tic Tacs back in. Those rubber bumps you see between the tire treads are there for your safety. The raised edges tell you what the minimum height of your tread is. If the bump and the edges are even, it's time for you to visit the tire shop as soon as possible. But if the bumps are well beneath the level of the edges, you're good to go. What about that black grating on the microwave window? It's something called a Faraday shield. And it's there to prevent microwaves from getting away and turning the entire room into a Faraday cage. If the microwaves escape, your meal won't cook properly either. So yep, the cage is not there to make it difficult for you to see your meal while it's cooking. It's keeping the electromagnetic energy inside. How about a wrench compatible screwdriver? Cover your screwdriver with the end of your wrench and you can increase its torque. That's why the head of your screwdriver is designed the way it is. When you have odd angles, you can use this strategy. You've probably heard those myths, the blue side of the eraser can erase the pen. False. Its purpose is to erase a pencil. But in case you're writing something on heavier paper. The blue side can remove smudges you see after using the pink eraser too. Have you ever wondered why oranges in supermarkets mostly come in the red mesh bag? It's a trick to make this food look more orange and encourage you to make a purchase. An extra tip, don't throw away the mesh bag. Tie it up so you can have a small pot scrubber to clean your sink, kitchen, appliances, and dishes. You can see golf balls don't have a perfectly round shape. Their surface is covered with many little dimples, something golf balls didn't always have. At one point, experienced golfers started noticing how, through time, older balls with imperfections, such as nicks and bumps, could travel further. Such things create turbulence in the air around the golf ball, which eventually reduces drag. So, manufacturers started producing balls with dimples so they could go farther and faster. You might have noticed that sometimes there are ridges in toothpick tops. It's more hygienic because when you break that off, you can prop the toothpick up on it and it won't touch anything. Another safety feature you'll find, this time in your car, is a tab on your rear view mirror. With it, you can change the position of the mirror so you don't get blinded if there's a car behind you with its high beams on. So this little tab helps you control the glare of lights coming from behind. This feature showed up in the 1930s, but in the early 1970s, it became a part of standard equipment in most trucks and cars. Do you see that tiny hole on your iPhone right next to the rear-facing camera? It's a microphone, and it's there so your phone can record sound as you turn your camera around. Some cables have a thick cylinder towards the end of the cord. It's called a ferrite core or a choke. It's a magnetic iron oxide that stops high-frequency electromagnetic interference. For example, you know that annoying static noise you get if you bring your phone too close to a speaker? This interrupts your call, which is why cable cords with big cylinders are pretty useful, because they prevent these things. Do you know why nearly all luggage bags and backpacks have two zippers? It's way more convenient and easier to open in that way. But not just that. You can also lock these two zippers together to keep the stuff inside your bags safer. You know how toilets at public spots like malls 
have those big gaps at the bottom? It's primarily for better circulation of air. This type of door also makes it easier to clean the toilet or check if it's occupied if you're standing in line. Other than that, if you get stuck there and the lock gets broken, you still have a way to escape. You can just crawl out. Ever notice those plastic end caps on utility knives? And they also have scales on them, which indicates you may use them multiple times but with sharp edges. You can separate the blades through these plastic end caps. Then you can move the slider and bring the sharp blade to the front. If you've ever taken a moment to examine a regular grocery cart, especially their fold-out section, you probably notice those metal loops jutting out. They're designed to protect the items you carry in your cart. You can use them to hang bags with soft items. You don't want to accidentally squish with heavier products, like bread, or easily breakable things like eggs. Many coffee mugs come with curved notches on their bottom. When you're washing your mugs, put them against the rack at an angle in your dishwasher. This way, the water won't pool in there, so your favorite cup will be completely dry by the time you take it out of the dishwasher. If you're a McFlurry fan, you've probably noticed there's a square hole in the handle of the spoon. It's there so you can attach it to the special machine that mixes the ice cream and your favorite toppings together. The machine has a bar that slips into this square-shaped spoon and then thoroughly stirs it. And you get the spoon so they can minimize the mess during the process. Quite neat, wouldn't you say? A regular milk jug has a dent on one side. Some might see it as a random design decision, but a dent has several purposes. One of them is to get bigger if there's a gas buildup. This happens when your milk is spoiled so you don't even have to try to check this out. Also, the dent is there so the jug doesn't burst if you accidentally drop it. The dent allows the expansion space that deals with the sudden pressure that happens when you drop the jug. Dental floss. Sure, it's important for your dental health, and it's easy to assume what you do with it. But dental floss is great in the kitchen as well because it's a very precise cake slicer, way better than a regular knife. Most kitchen shears have a serrated opening right there at the center where the blades and handles meet. It's something you can use to trim difficult herbs such as rosemary, thyme, or chives. Because of this opening, you don't need to pick the leaves off by hand, but destem them in one motion. The majority of gelatin containers or single serving yogurts come with a tin foil lid. And in most cases, you can use this covering as a disposable spoon. Just peel away the covering and after a couple of simple folds, you'll have a perfect little spoon for your midday snack. Imagine you're an art detective and your task is to explore the mysteries behind the world's most famous paintings. I'm talking about works from Da Vinci, Michelangelo, Picasso. So grab your magnifying glass as this journey is about to begin. First off on your list is Rome. After enjoying delicious pasta, you head to the Sistine Chapel, home to the world's most famous ceiling. Oh, and you know how they say Michelangelo painted the frescoes lying down? This is just a myth. Actually, the painter created a complex system of platforms that allowed him to paint standing. You're checking out the creation of Adam, that fresco in the middle. The Italian artist Michelangelo, the author of this masterpiece, was widely known for his study of human anatomy. Art experts argue that the right part of the painting is an anatomically correct depiction of an enlarged brain. To proof check this, you try overlapping a picture of the organ and the artwork. It seems to be a match. The cerebellum, the optic nerve, and the pituitary gland are all there. Even the floating green scarf thingy appears to match the vertebral artery. Some researchers think it was Michelangelo's way of depicting knowledge and wisdom but you have to sleep on it to decide what you think. Moving on, you catch a train and arrive in Florence. Time for a quick gelato break, then straight to the Academia Gallery. One of art's most celebrated sculptures is waiting for you inside, Michelangelo's David. David is a 17-foot tall marble wonder. It was carved for about three years. The mystery surrounding it is to figure out the statue's true expression. Looking at him from below, 
you'll think his face is serene and peaceful. But art historians argue that this work was largely misunderstood. Apparently, his body hides a very different story. Take a closer look, and you'll notice his brows are frowning, and the veins in his arms are popping out. That doesn't look too relaxed, does it? Michelangelo's idea was to depict David right before an important confrontation. So maybe he wasn't all that serene after all. Italy is so rich in art, you can't leave just yet. You're still in Florence. You pay a visit to the famous Uffizi Gallery. Many famous paintings are hosted by this museum, but you're checking out Botticelli's Primavera, or Spring. This artwork is mysterious from the get-go. Experts can't say the exact year it was commissioned. It remained untitled for years, until the painter Giorgio Vasari finally came up with a name for it. Usually, when critics and viewers admire this painting, they focus on the figures in the foreground. But in this case, the actual work lies in that Botticelli painted over 46 different plant species with almost identical precision. And, oh, in the painting overall, these plant figures are repeated over 200 times. Unbelievable! I'd say the last visits were full of impressions, weren't they? Ready to keep going? A plane ride later, you arrive in Paris, the city of lights, berets, and the famous Mona Lisa. You go through the Museum de Louvre and come to Leonardo da Vinci's masterpiece, La Gioconda. There are many theories regarding this work of art, and you dive into some of them. A strong case has been made that the Mona Lisa could be a self-portrait of da Vinci himself. Historians have thoroughly compared da Vinci's face and that of the Mona Lisa. And guess what? They appear to be strikingly similar. Oh, and then there's the smirk theory. Dentist and art expert Joseph Bartowski claims to have discovered the secret behind Mona Lisa's smirk. He says her tight facial expression is a typical indication of someone who lost their front teeth. Could it be so? Also, in 2010, the Italian Committee for Cultural Heritage found a collection of symbols hidden in the painting. These are only visible through highly technological magnifying lenses, but they showed that Leonardo inscribed an LV inside Mona Lisa's right eye. Experts guess that this is da Vinci's signature, but the other symbols, a CE in the left eye and a 72 in the arch of the background bridge are still very mysterious. Phew, you covered a lot of ground on this one. Ah, of course, at the end of your visit, remember to test if her eyes really follow you around. Now you're headed to Amsterdam to check out the Rijksmuseum. You came to see a specific Rembrandt painting that hides a mysterious story. The Night Watch is one of Rembrandt's most famous paintings, but experts argue that the name of the painting and its content are mismatched. Let's take a closer look. The painting depicts a large group ready to embark on a mission. Rembrandt's technique is called chiaroscuro, highlighting the contrast between light and shade. Until 1947, art critics believed the painter was depicting a nighttime scene. But when the painting was cleared of a thick dust layer, it became clear that the scene was happening in broad daylight, with the sun streaming down from the top left. Now, it's too late to change its name to The Day Watch. While in Amsterdam, you find a museum dedicated to Van Gogh's art. Did you know that he painted over 900 paintings during an impressive period of only 10 years? Anyway, the Van Gogh Museum hosts the biggest collection of yellow sunflower paintings you'll probably see in your life. Actually, almost all of Van Gogh's paintings feature dominant yellow shades. This particularity of his art may be a result of how he saw the world. Some art experts have speculated that one of Van Gogh's remedies changed his color perception, making him see more yellow around him. Okay, so this trip just keeps getting better. The next stop on your list is the United Kingdom. Then, on to the National Gallery. You may spend hours looking at Jan van Eyck's painting Arnolfini Portrait, and not see anything out of the ordinary. In the foreground, a couple holds hands and stares at the viewer. But if you zoom in on the mirror on the wall, you'll see two more people in the room. Art experts say the male figure in the painting has his hands raised to greet these two people seen in the mirror. 
and that one of the figures is Von Eich himself. Oh, and that's not the only watermark the painter left. Above the mirror, you'll see his flamboyant signature. Jan Von Eich was here, 1434. And speaking of people trying to sneak into their art, Caravaggio, the renowned Italian Renaissance painter, left a little Easter egg in one of his famous paintings, Bacchus. This one is a bit difficult to spot. In the half-filled jar in the bottom left corner of the painting, there is a tiny self-portrait of the painter himself, hidden amongst the liquid. To see the image clearly, one needs the help of sophisticated technology, or at least a very efficient magnifying lens. But it's there, a male figure, aka Caravaggio, with a brush in his hand. Fun fact, the tiny self-portrait was first noticed in 1922, over 300 years after the painting was completed. It was forgotten due to poor conservation. To finish the trip, you fly overseas across the Atlantic, all the way to Chicago. The enormous collection of the Art Institute hosts a well-known painting by Pablo Picasso, the old guitarist. This painting's secret is so well hidden that it also needs the help of X-ray machines and super fancy technology. But the results are worth it. The readings show that Picasso painted the old guitarist on top of another unfinished painting. We can clearly see the outlines and shapes of a half-drawn female figure that Picasso gave up on mid-work. The emerging artists of the time used that way of saving money quite often, as canvases were expensive. This was quite a tiring world trip, wasn't it? Get some rest, Sherlock of Art. If you look at it on the street, you'll think a fire hydrant is about three feet in height. But the actual size of the device used to provide water supply to firefighters all over the world is twice as large. That is, if you count the rest of the hydrant, which is hiding underground. They're mostly red, and it's not just a matter of urban design. First of all, they need to be of bright, easily noticeable colors, so firefighters can spot them fast when they need to. The choice of color depends on how much water the hydrant can hold. It can sometimes vary depending on the location, but here's the breakdown. A red fire hydrant can splash 500 gallons of water per minute, while an orange one at least 1,000 gallons. Green ones mostly process 1,500 gallons of water per minute, and the most plentiful ones colored blue can generally contain over 1,500 gallons. Hey bowling fans, isn't it super annoying when your bowling ball gets cracked? Turns out that most of them get damaged because of incorrect storage or spikes in temperature. Now come on and face it, since it's already cracked a bit, aren't you curious what's actually inside the bowling ball? Cause I sure am. Let's have a look. They mostly make the inner core of the ball of powdered metal oxides, like calcium or iron oxide. They mix them with some resin and catalyst to harden the whole mixture. So that light bulb shape you now see inside of the ball is actually its heaviest part. It also influences how your bowling ball rotates when going down the lane. The same goes with spray paint cans. When you shake it, it makes a weird noise. But what is that thing in there? It's called a pea, and it's meant to hold the paint mixture in place and maintain its shape. They generally make it out of plastic, metal, or ceramic. It basically acts as a whisk to make sure your paint is well mixed together before you apply it to your surface of choice. Ever wondered how soda bottles keep that refreshing fizz for that long? Well, they have a little plastic ring fastened to the lid. They place it there to keep the gas from escaping and making the soda go flat, even if you shake it around in your bag the whole day. Speaking of things we use on a hot summer's day, wait, wait, don't put your baseball cap on just yet. Take a look at it for a minute and you'll notice there's a small button on the very top. Is it functional or is it just there for the sake of design? Way back when people started using fabrics to cover their heads, some say the button was actually functional. Since it's on top of the cap where the fabric panels come together, the top button helps keep the cap crown in one single piece. Now, with recent advances in fabric and pattern design, the button is more of an aesthetic feature. It's used to cover up the joint point of the fabric panels. Your cap might not have a button at all, but don't you think a cap actually looks better with one? Cotton pads have two sides, and if you take the time to look at them carefully, they're actually different in texture. Just in case you've ever wondered why, the textured side is for applying makeup, and the even side is for removing it. Bookworms, this one is for you. Dust jackets that come with a lot of hardcover books are not just meant to make your book look pretty, they also double as a bookmark. 
Just fold the pages you've already read underneath the inside of the jacket, and voila! Next time you reach out for your favorite shirt, take a look at the top buttonhole. It should be stitched horizontally, and all the other ones are vertical. Turns out that the dress shirt was designed this way, since the first and the last buttons were the first ones to unbutton throughout the day. They then changed the direction of the buttonhole to ensure the shirt would stay nice and fitted before you're ready to take it off. These days we have so many variations of this awesome dessert that it's hard to imagine we've ever lived without it. You can find different types of cookie dough ice cream or even chocolate chip cookie cake basically everywhere. But the famous cookie wasn't actually invented until 1930. The story goes that a woman named Ruth Graves Wakefield was preparing some chocolate cookies as she was waiting for some guests to arrive. She soon figured out she was out of baker's chocolate, a crucial ingredient for the classic cookies. To fix things up, she chopped up a block of semi-sweet chocolate, thinking it would eventually spread out evenly throughout the batter, given the heat of the oven. Things didn't necessarily go as planned. But hey, it's great they didn't because this is how she invented this modern dessert we now can't get enough of. And speaking of popular snacks, the potato chip is even younger than the chocolate chip cookie. Well, at least historically. There are many stories trying to explain how it was invented. One of them goes like this. A chef named George Crumb, based in New York, put the chips together in 1953. He decided to try a different cooking solution when one of his customers didn't have nice things to say about his french fries. He said they were too thick and kind of mushy. Then, Crumb came up with potatoes that were thinly sliced and fried until brown. People absolutely loved the dish, and they welcomed the first ever batch of chips with open arms. Ice cream, anyone? If the story is true, Back in 1904, at the St. Louis World's Fair, one ice cream shop owner ran out of cups to serve his dish. So, he fashioned a waffle into the shape of a cone, and the rest was history. Okay, I'll admit it, chewing gum-like treats have been around since the ancient Greeks. So this one isn't particularly a revolutionary discovery, but the actual gum we buy today wasn't there until the late 1800s. An American inventor named Thomas Adams wanted to mix together different chemicals to create rubber. He tried and failed, for that matter, to play with chicle for his experiment, but ended up fashioning this neat treat. They still use chicle to this day to produce most chewing gums. Back in the 1800s, there lived a man named Jean-Baptiste Joly, who worked in the fabric industry as a textile maker. How he came up with this next invention that we use a lot these days has less to do with him and more to do with his maid. The story goes that the woman accidentally knocked a kerosene lamp over onto a tablecloth. Instead of getting upset over the damaged fabric, Jolly noticed that the substance actually made the material cleaner. Figured it out yet? Yep, that's how the idea for the very first dry cleaner popped up. A very neat accident, if I do say so myself. Now this one I loved. Did you know matchsticks were initially called friction lights? Or at least that's how their inventor, a chemist named John Walker, called them back in 1826. He scraped a stick coated in chemicals across his hearth, totally by accident one day, and realized that they ignited and created a spark. Initially made out of cardboard, they were then made using wooden splints and sandpaper. Back in the 1940s, a man named Harry Coover stumbled upon a chemical formulation that seemed to stick to everything it touched. The scientific community at the time didn't look much into it as the formula didn't seem to have many applications back then. It wasn't until 1951 that he looked a bit more into the formula and decided to repurpose it, along with a fellow Eastman Kodak researcher named Fred Joyner. They gave it a proper full name. But you must know it by the shorter version, Super Glue. It also has many uses in security these days that it's hard to believe that we didn't come up with this one on purpose. Back in 1903, a scientist named Edward Benedictus knocked over a flask by accident. He looked down and was amazed to see that the glassware had just slightly cracked but maintained its shape. He was expecting it to break into a million tiny pieces. Curious about this hidden feature, he looked into it and figured out what was keeping the glass together was a substance coating the inside of the glass. Ta-da! That's how humanity came up with safety glass. Crackers have holes in them to stop them cracking and breaking during baking. If the holes weren't there, steam would build up inside the cracker and make it collapse. 
Take a look at a soda bottle and you'll notice a disc inside the bottle cap. This helps seal in the liquid and the drink's fizz, stopping it from going flat. The long neck on your soda bottle is designed like that to encourage you to hold it there. That way, the heat from your hand will only warm that top bit of the bottle instead of heating up your whole drink. It's always hard to see your food in the microwave because of that pesky black grate on the window, but it's there to stop harmful microwaves from escaping. Called the Faraday Shield, it protects you as well as ensures that your food cooks properly. Food items like chips come with about 43% nitrogen inside their package. It might seem like they sell you half a bag of air, but it's exactly the opposite. Oxygen, the gas we breathe, would react with the chips inside the bag and make them go rancid quickly. It's called oxidizing for a reason. Nitrogen, on the other hand, is an inert gas that helps keep the foodstuffs fresh and also protects them from breaking during transportation. A bag of chips that has this gas cushion lets you enjoy your crunchies without them turning to potato crumbs. Donuts have holes in them so that the inside and outside cook evenly. Before the holes were added, the inside would often be greasy and doughy while the outside was crisp. Margins on paper aren't for writing in dates and numbering lists. They were originally added to serve a protective function. Back in the day, rats used to be a pesky problem in people's homes, and paper was one of their favorite snacks. Margins were added as a safeguard so that the rats would nibble on blank paper, rather than taking a bite out of your important work. That hole in your hollow lollipop stick isn't to prevent choking should it ever be swallowed. It's actually there to keep the candy in place. Excess candy flows into the hollow tube, and the hole, which when it hardens, keeps the pop in place. If it was a smooth stick, the candy would slide off easily. Vacuums come with so many attachments, but do any of us really know what that one with long bristles is for? It's for dusting and is perfect for cleaning framed art, blinds, and lampshades. What's the difference between a wooden hanger and a plastic one? Aside from helping keep your clothes in shape, cedar wood hangers also repel moths and bugs. Salt isn't just used for cooking, it can get rid of tough smells. Rubbing salt on your fingertips after chopping garlic should remove the smell. It also works on shoes. Toasters have a secret slide in the bottom that can be removed, so you can clean out all those annoying breadcrumbs. If you ever had problems with popping chocolates from the box, look at those little holes around them. They're there to help you. If you push a hole right next to the candy, it'll jump out easily. When you take a sip from a coffee cup with a lid, it decreases air pressure inside the cup, so air tries to get in. The tiny hole on the lid allows air to enter that way, so liquid can smoothly pour out the main hole. More on beverage lids. The small button on them let restaurant workers, and customers too, understand what's in a cup. Near each button, there's a name. Just look at which one is pushed down. The numbers on the fruit stickers tell you how exactly they were grown. If there are four digits and the first is four or three, the fruit has been sprayed with pesticides. If there are five digits and the first is nine, the fruit has been grown organically. If there are five digits and the first is eight, the fruit has been genetically modified. When you're on your way back to the car after bagging up everything you bought, use loops on a shopping cart to hang the bags. Now softer items like bread, eggs, fruit and veggies won't get squashed by the heavier goods. If you don't have anyone to hold the other end of your tape measure when you try to measure something, tap a nail on it. Now simply hook your tape on it using the tiny hole all tape measures have. The square-shaped spoon that goes with a McFlurry helps to mix the ice cream toppings through the dessert. The spoon hooks directly to a machine and spins around. Padlocks that are used outside quickly get out of order because of rain. See this little hole in the bottom? It's made for pouring engine oil inside. Do this and the key will again turn in the lock without any difficulty. You keep banging the bottom of a glass ketchup jar, but nothing's coming out. Here's a little tip. Turn your ketchup bottle at an angle. 
and tap on the middle of the neck. In many fast food restaurants, customers fill tiny folded paper cups to get a portion of ketchup or mustard. Here's the news. The cups are supposed to unfold and turn into small paper platters to hold a great deal more sauce. That little hole on the handle of a pot or a frying pan isn't just for hanging them on the wall. During cooking, put the end of your utensil in the hole, and it'll be propped over the pot to save your kitchen from extra mess. The blue or any other dark color bristles on your toothbrush are meant to remind you when it's time to get a new one. If you see that bristles have become pale, change the toothbrush or its head. An extra hole at the upper part of the sink has multiple hidden functions. First, in case someone forgets to close the tap, the water won't overflow and the bathroom won't get flooded. Second, thanks to that hole, the water drains faster as it gives an escape for the air, helping the water flow down. Most metallic zippers have a hidden lock inside them to save you from awkward situations, such as an undone fly. Don't leave the zipper handle in an upward position. When you pull it downwards, it automatically locks. It's all thanks to those tiny grooves hidden underneath the handle. Spoiled milk emits gases, like most foods when they go off. A classic plastic milk jug has a concave shape on one side. So when the gases expand inside the jug, it expands too, and the concave shape curves out. Also, if you want to save some milk for later and freeze it, the jug will expand when the milk gets solid as well, occupying more space in a jug. Bath foam isn't only for fun or a nice smell. It also helps regulate the temperature. The bubbles keep the water hot, so you can enjoy a bath a bit longer. Anyway, it works for acrylic bathtubs only. Those made of metal lose heat really fast either way. Many cups and mugs have little grooves on the bottom on purpose. They're designed for washing machines. The grooves let the water flow and not spill over your feet when you take the cup out. Also, those grooves let the air flow so the cup doesn't crack even if the tea is scalding. A point on an ointment cap is there for a reason too. Most tubes are usually sealed with foil and it's better to avoid opening it with fingers unless you're ready to say goodbye to your nails. A point easily opens even the most safely sealed tube. Escalator brushes aren't for keeping your shoes clean and polished. It might be tough to apply wax right on that brush while the escalator's on the move. It's for your safety. Brushes won't let you come close to the edge, so a long coat or boot-cut jeans won't end up in between the steps. All Tic Tac containers are designed to dispense one Tic Tac every time you open it. The lid has the same shape as the candy. Turn the container upside down, gently shake it, and slowly open it. You'll notice only one candy stuck between those lid grooves. So if you just open the container and shake it until five or even more candies fall into your mouth, it means you've been eating Tic Tacs wrong all this time. The pom-pom on top of your beanie wasn't put there as a fashion accessory. The pom-pom was originally added to the hat to prevent sailors from banging their heads on the ceilings of the ships that were too low. <clears throat> now, the earliest logos can be traced back to ancient family crests. In the Middle Ages, people with pubs and shops started using various symbols to present what they did and to distinguish themselves from others in their line of business. But why is it so important for a brand to have an impactful logo? Well, because first impressions count, even for businesses. A well-crafted logo can send the right message to potential customers and help people learn more about your business at first glance. With so many logos to look at nowadays, especially since the beginning of e-commerce, it's easy to overlook the hidden meanings and symbols in everyday products. The Domino's Pizza logo also says a lot about the company's past. As the name suggests, there's a domino piece in the graphic design of the logo. The initial plan was to add another dot to the domino for each new location. But the company grew so big that adding dots for all the locations wasn't possible. So those three dots we see today are there to remind customers of the three initial locations of the pizza chain. Now, when you look at the Beats logo, the first thing that comes to mind is the letter B, and rightly so. 
But there's a hidden meaning here as well. The red circle actually depicts a person's head, while the white letter B also stands for a pair of headphones. Another very customer-oriented logo is that of the brand LG. The company designed its logo to include both the company's initial name, Lucky Gold Star, and the company's current slogan, Life's Good. A careful look at their logo shows not only the letters L and G, but also a smiley face. They may be one of the most famous jean manufacturers in the world, but their brand identity also has some hidden meaning in it. The Levi's logo is designed in the shape of a pocket that can be found on each and every pair of the jeans they produce. The FedEx logo is also very cool. At first glance, it looks like the words Fed and X written together in two contrasting colors, purple and orange. But if you look closely between the letters E and X, you'll notice that the negative space is in the shape of an arrow pointing to the right. It symbolizes movement and agility. The Unilever Group has a staggering number of brands all over the world, more than 400. It's no surprise that their U-shaped logo is composed of many different symbols, like a flower, a spoon, or a bird. It's done to showcase how many things they produce, from food and refreshments to personal care and beauty products. NBC, or the National Broadcasting Company, is a broadcast and radio network with a logo that's very nice to look at. It's bright, colorful, and flashy. Why is that? Well, because the network was created at about the same time color television started to gain momentum. The bird-shaped NBC logo symbolizes the initial six divisions of the network, and the colors are also a nice reminder to customers that NBC is proud as a peacock of their programs. The Evernote logo is another of those designs that clearly shows the brand's overall purpose. While the font used is relatively simple, on the left of the word Evernote, there's a depiction of an elephant. The animal is a well-known symbol of good memory, and the shape of its ear is curled like a post-it note. A cool touch for an app designed for organization and note-taking, wouldn't you say so? Now, the Cisco logo comes with its own little secret as well. The font is quite minimalistic, but the lines above are there to depict the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. The first CEO of the company, a man named John Morgridge, thought this would be a great idea to emphasize moving toward the future and connecting two worlds. The Amazon logo is everywhere these days, but there's a small detail in there that most people probably miss. The arrow connecting the letters A and Z, the one in the shape of a smile, is there to point out that they have a complete inventory of products, from A to Z. Audi is one of those brands that likes to showcase their history. Those four simple intertwining circles on the company's logo are a reminder of the four companies which were initially part of the conglomerate – DKW, Porsche, Wanderer, and Audi. There's a nice story behind the Baskin-Robbins logo as well. Between the letters B and R in the middle of the logo, you can notice the number 31. Why is that? because the company has 31 original flavors of ice cream. I think I've darn near tried them all. A lot of companies out there like to give their logos a bit of a vintage touch, and Picasa is one of them. Before we had digital cameras and the perfect portrait was just a click away, analog cameras had a little thing called a shutter. That's a device that opens to let light pass through, exposing the film and creating a photograph. The Picasso logo is just that, a shutter nicely colored in red, blue, green, purple, and orange. The 7-Eleven logo has a nice twist that might not have caught your eye by now. The N at the end of the word is in lowercase, unlike the rest of the letters, which are in all caps. It's said that the company's president's wife, back in the 60s, wanted to make the company's logo look a bit less harsh. She believed that the uppercase font would be a bit too rigid. And she wanted to make the overall appearance of the logo more fluid. A graphic designer found a solution by switching to a lowercase n at the end of the word. So I'm guessing that when you pronounce it, you just throw away the lowercase n, like 7-Eleven. Or not. Chocolate fans must know the Toblerone brand. If you're one of them, have you ever noticed all the intricate detailing in its logo? The city of Bern in Switzerland, where the company was founded, is also named the City of Bears. 
When you visit this place, you'll see that there are bears everywhere, from the city's coat of arms to public trash cans. The Toblerone chocolate is shaped like a mountain, hence the mountain in the logo. But there's also a bear depicted there, hidden in the negative space. The Chick-fil-A logo is one of those that goes straight to the point with their imagery. The C stands for chicken, of course, but it's also shaped like a chicken if you look closely. Another great example of negative space used creatively is the Formula One logo. Between the F, which stands for the word formula, and the horizontal lines depicting red flames, the number one is intelligently hidden. Bet you didn't see that one. One of the greatest sportswear brands, Adidas, has a mystery of its own. At first glance, its logo is merely comprised of three vertical lines. Don't they look like a mountain to you? This mountain is there to symbolize the effort athletes have to make to reach the top, which is like, you know, climbing a mountain. The IBM logo has its own statement to make. The three letters of the company's name, I, B, and uh, M, are designed to be the horizontal lines meant to symbolize speed and dynamism. This is one of the company's main values, which has always been important to the founders. With a cool logo to present to the world, Ray-Ban has become a household name for sunglasses. Just to make sure you don't miss what they actually do, the B in the logo is designed like a pair of shades. The worldwide internet source of information, Wikipedia, has a logo to match its brand identity. The globe is made of many puzzle pieces, each with a different symbol on it, and some missing pieces as well. It tells the story of the company's mission without a single word. That's a nice lesson in storytelling, don't you think? Subway is one of those brands that have a nice combination of the logo and name, meant to symbolize that you can have a delicious meal anytime. The pointing arrows on the letter S and Y look like the directions found at Subway Station. Now, there's no way you can miss the two pieces of chocolate in the Hershey Kisses logo. But there's a third one hidden in there if you look closely. Have you seen it yet? It's hidden between the letters K and I. If you've ever redecorated a house or planned a wedding, you most likely use Pinterest to store and share ideas. The Pinterest logo looks like the letter P in a red circle. But look again. This P is shaped like a drawing pen. To the untrained eye, the logo of the London Symphony Orchestra looks like an eccentric red curved line. But in reality, it has a purpose of its own as it symbolizes a musical conductor. Another brand with hidden imagery in its logo is Magic Coffee. The cup of coffee on the top of the name is shaped like a top hat if you take a closer look. Okay, I'm ready for some food now. The cylinder on the end of a cable is sitting there. Useless as it might seem. In fact, this is a ferrite bead that assists with many electrical wires to reduce electromagnetic interference. Electrical wires act like unintentional antennas, broadcasting the EMI. There's a reason why the spinning wheel inside their microwave is circular. A circular object will evenly distribute the heat as opposed to a rectangular and square one. When you place containers of these shapes inside, the energy is focused on the corners rather than spread evenly like in a round container. The temperature gauge on a toaster is commonly used to determine how crisp you like your toast. But the other, more specific use for the gauge was for the different types of bread. Light and sweet types of bread heat up much faster as opposed to heavier brown and rye ones. The older bread is, the more time it will need in the toaster to ensure the golden brown result you're looking for. Most ovens give you the option of leaving the door ajar when broiling a dish inside. You probably think the goal here is to help cool down the oven after use. In reality, its purpose is to focus on cooking the top of the dish and to ensure a crusty layer. Controlling the buildup of heat and steam by releasing it through the slightly ajar door gives you the desired result without cooking the entire dish to a crispy end. You probably have noticed that your dishwasher has specific areas for different types of cutleries and dishware. But all the dishware pieces should be facing towards the center and not all in one direction. 
What types of foods were on the plates will also determine where they should be located in the racks. As the middle of the machine gets the strongest spray, carb-based stains from tomatoes and potatoes should be placed there. The detergent is more focused on the outside during the clean, creating a waterfall-like cleanse. That's why protein-based stains, like from eggs, for example, should be stacked there. Ceiling fans push cool air down on a hot day, circulating the room. But they can serve you during the winter just as effectively if you flick that switch on the side or use the pulley. So if you want to save some money on heating and try to quickly warm up your room on a cold day, turn the fan on. It will push the air up and spread the warm air around, more effectively warming the room up. Do you still use sticky notes instead of those fancy new apps on all possible gadgets? Welcome to the yeah. club. Regardless of what you use them for, they can annoyingly curl up. If you've had this issue, it's because you've peeled them from the bottom upwards. Doing it this way causes the curling. Peeling them from the side will ensure they remain flat, ready to remind you of your daily tasks. Did you know that can openers weren't invented until 50 years after preservation cans had been readily available? So how would it be possible to open a can? There are a couple of alternative methods just in case you've misplaced your trusty opener. All you need is a metal spoon. Set the can down on the counter. Hold on to it firmly and grasp the head of the spoon tightly. Apply pressure and vigorously rub the edge of the can's top over a small area. It takes time, but as you continuously rub, a small indentation soon opens a hole. Once the hole is wide enough for the spoon's tip, pry the lid upwards and keep going along the edges until you can finally access the hard-earned meal within. Most toilets rely on water pressure and gravity to function, so a power outage will not affect them. But if yours does need electricity to function, you must be worried about using it when the power is out. The good news is, the power is only used to fill the toilet and not to flush it. As the flushing mechanism will still work, open the toilet tank and pour in a couple of gallons, and you're free to flush away whatever you need to. Blockages in shower drains occur over a long period of time. It's inevitable. We lose 50 to 100 hairs a day, and many of them will endeavor to reside within our shower drains. Hair only forms the foundations of the blockage, and this attracts the buildup of various other things. A great life hack is to use your vacuum cleaner and put the nozzle in the hole once removing the plug. Apply a wet cloth around the nozzle, ensuring air cannot escape. The vacuum will suck up the blockages a lot easier. This will help avoid any extra cost from plumbers, as they themselves use this technique. To make your candles last longer, trim their wicks multiple times and keep them as far away from water and moist as possible. It will guarantee that your candle's wax stays firm and steady and continues to burn slower for a longer period of time. The empty space between the panes of the oven door is there for a reason. You can stick a brush in there to clean the oven door glass. It's easy to access this space through the bottom of the door, open the lower shelf, then push the brush through the hole. While you're parking in a garage, you might find it difficult to determine how close to it you need to be. Not all cars have sensors ensuring you keep the right distance before the bumper makes an indentation on the wall. Applying a rope with a tennis ball from the ceiling at the right distance will help you learn the best distance to park from the wall. We've all been told to loosen a lock with WD-40 or lubricant. Yes, we all know we should have these around the house. But in case you don't, a great alternative is drawing with a gray lead pencil along the edges of the key and then putting it into the lock. Continue doing this until the keyhole has been adequately lubricated and the key functions smoothly. Pliers are prone to damage when you use them to adjust faucets and shower heads and are also difficult to grip. Take a couple of pieces from the end of an old garden hose and attach them to the jaws of the pliers. You'll find a huge improvement wow. with grip and will avoid wear and tear. You can find a good use for discarded rubber for different things around the house. When fed up with tightening or loosening with a screwdriver, try using a simple rubber band. 
Place part of it into the screw grip and the screwdriver will have far greater traction. Moving cement blocks isn't safe for your lower back. Even with a wheelbarrow, it can be a risky process to place the cement onto the ground without causing damage. Three simple cylinder pipes can make a world of difference, regardless of the size of the block. Try lifting the edge onto the first pipe with a pry bar, then pushing and maneuvering as you gradually direct the three pipes towards the desired location. Just make sure you're not doing this on a slope. That first strike on a nail can be a great success or will result in a throbbing thumb. A bobby pin is perfectly shaped to hold a nail in place, allowing for your hand to be clear out of harm's way and for you to strike the nail without fear. Use a crayon instead of a pen or pencil while working with a wet saw to ensure the markings are not removed. They will also be easier to see under the murky water. Checking the drains on the roof and determining when they need to be cleaned can take a lot of time. Using duct tape, attach a mirror on the end of a long broom and review whether the drains need to be cleaned. To further assist with your balance as you check on the gutters, attach a pair of old trainers to the end of the ladder. The spread of the shoe and its grip will ensure a further level of safety. Liquid caulk normally comes in huge tubes, so you can never use it all at once. The hardened tips of liquid caulk create blockages. Grab a used cork and drill through it to make a perfect lid, concealing the liquid caulk. Now it's ready to be used again with no blockages. Okay, I know it's kind of cold to the touch, especially on a freezing winter's day. But did you know that brass doorknobs actually serve a purpose apart from looking classy and shiny? Since it's a copper alloy, brass has antimicrobial properties. That means it can help get rid of harmful germs and bacteria, sometimes in up to two hours. In high traffic areas, that's all the more useful. But since brass is much costlier than other metals like nickel and steel, you barely see these types of doorknobs anymore nowadays. Speaking of lovely multi-purpose items, most screwdrivers have a tiny little secret of their own. They can sometimes be slid through a wrench so that they can be used to create more torque when twisting, not to mention the uses when it comes to bolts in hard-to-reach places. There's a reason why buttons on women's shirts are for the left-handed, and it has nothing to do with fashion. This practice dates back to the times when chambermaids were helping ladies dress themselves, and it was easier for them to perform their job with this orientation. Having the buttons placed as such indicated a sign of wealth, so it's easy to imagine why the practice carried on, even though most people dress themselves nowadays. Next time you receive a package in your mail, take a look at your box cutter. If it features some diagonal lines on the blade, you're in for a little design perk. Turns out that these are blades that snap off. Continuously cutting cardboard can dull the sharp edge of the blade. To help prevent the need to buy a brand new box cutter, the top segment along the next line can be broken off to reach a new sharp edge. To do this, check out the small hole at the base of the tool, sometimes called the blade snapper. The people that first came up with this brilliant invention were engineers inspired by the way chocolate bars are segmented. Hold on a minute, don't throw away the cardboard package just yet. Most likely, you'll have some silica gel packets somewhere at the bottom of the box. Since this gel is basically a drawing tool, it gathers up the moisture out of its environment, so you can store these packets for further occasions. Whether you'll need to dry out your phone or some other electrical object, you can place them in a container next to the silica gel to reduce the damage. You don't have to be a mechanic to know when a standard car tire needs replacing, since they come equipped with a neat indicator. Take a closer look, and you'll see that treads within the tire are a bunch of rubber notches. When the treads are evened out with the perpendicular bars, it's a sign you need to book an appointment with your local car service. Since most likely the tires have lost most of their traction and may not be safe for driving any longer. The upper corners of a car windshield feature textured black dots melted into the glass edges. This neat add-on isn't there for design purposes. It's called frit glazing, which means that a special type of ceramic paint is added to the window for protecting its sealant from UV rays. It also conceals and creates a coarser surface for the adhesive used to set the window in place. Whenever you're up for a drive, check out if there's a small tab under your car's rearview mirror. 
that you didn't know it's there to help switch the mirror from daytime to nighttime views. It uses a prismatic glass technology to blur the reflection and reduce the glare of headlights behind you in traffic. People came up with these manually tilted mirrors in the 1930s, but they became standard somewhere in the 1970s. While you're in the car, check out the headrests, as you most likely don't know that they carry a little disguised purpose. Of course, they're adjustable to accommodate passengers of any height so that they get the proper support for their heads and necks. The hidden feature is that they are detachable and come with two very solid metal bars. Should you ever find yourself stuck in a car and need to make a fast getaway, these bars come in handy to crack out the car windows. So you're out for a drive and you're suddenly out of gas. What I'm about to describe sounds more like a meme than an actual situation bound to happen. But what if you're in such a hurry that you accidentally drive off with the gas nozzle still in the tank? Well, the nozzles have been designed to prevent any hazards from happening, rest assured. They feature a breakaway device that will allow the hose to separate when taken out with enough force. Initially designed in the early 20th century to be worn exclusively by basketball players, sneakers soon became one of those fashion fundamentals, similar to jeans and leather jackets. If you take a closer look at them, you'll see they have two extra holes on the side, similar to the shoelace holes. They're manufactured as such not only to provide extra ventilation, but to allow people to get extra creative with their laces when wearing the shoes. Admit it, you've always thought that chopsticks are merged at the end for the sole purpose of keeping them together until you're ready to dig into your meal. That may or may not be the whole truth. Under a more detailed inspection, the wooden tools feature a square-shaped end. Chopsticks manufactured like this date back to an old Japanese traditional design, which can help with breaking the ends easily. The separated end can then be used as a resting block for the chopsticks to keep it more sanitized in hopes it can be used again, since they won't be touching the table or any other surface. Women's bikes have a special design which, surprisingly, has a historical and fashionable purpose. The lower frame is for the most part meant to make up for the generally shorter height of ladies, compared to that of the average gentleman. While that is the case for handlebars and saddles, the overall frame is lower for an additional purpose. Way back when women wore long skirts and dresses all day, every day they needed to make sure their outfits wouldn't get caught in the frame. That's how we came up with a lower-framed bicycle, perfectly made for women and their needs at the time. The fact that toothpastes are multicolored is not just a nice perk to make dental hygiene more fun. There's a secret meaning related to each of the colors, which dates back to the 1970s. In those days, people grew more and more interested in their oral health care, and as such, they were looking for products which could do more than merely clean their teeth. One company was the pioneer in that regard, adding mouthwash to its toothpaste, meaning the blue strip. They later added on the red strip, meant to feature ingredients which helped with gum care. Speaking of toothpaste, check the cap next time you open a new tube. You may be in for a little surprise. There's a pointed cone shape inside the cap, so you can puncture the seal of the toothpaste without cutting yourself or ruining your manicure. Not to mention, it's more hygienic since you won't be able to transfer germs or other bacteria into the product itself. On the subject of bathroom countertop items, Toothbrushes come with a neat add-on hidden in the bristle patterns. Apart from making the toothbrush look cooler, they also do come with a practical purpose. Most toothbrushes come with a pattern of blue bristles intertwined with white ones. The blue dye is meant to fade out, signaling the time when you need to replace your toothbrush. Dentists say that toothbrushes should be replaced every 3 to 4 months, but it does serve as a great reminder in case you forget. Still love playing with Lego? Don't judge. Hey, it's a great hobby for all ages. Notice there's a hole on top of the Lego heads? Behold, you're looking at a safety feature that the people at Lego designed to prevent choking hazards. The most dangerous issue should a person swallow any of these pieces is the blocking of the airways. Designing a hole inside the Lego head helps the air to flow freely through the piece until it can be removed safely. We're now used to all sorts of modern light bulbs, some tubular, some shaped like diamonds, and some even twisted all together. Historically, light bulbs were round and the initial shape served a purpose in itself. It was mainly connected to the fact that glass bulbs were hand-blown, which gave them the round shape to begin with. 
The hidden practical reason was that the light bulb filament needed to be at the same distance from every surface of the glass sphere. The easiest way to achieve this was to make the glass in the shape of a globe. Hey, have you ever been vibing out in your room, listening to some of your favorite songs, admiring the subwoofer of your speaker as it delivers magnificence to your eardrums? We all have! But have you ever asked yourself why that same speaker, along with other speakers across the globe, is almost always black? Some of you are probably screaming at your screen right now about your speaker being green, red, or any other color found in the rainbow. Number one, I said, almost always. And number two, if you look closely at the gorgeous design of your brightly colored music player, you'll often find that the speaker beneath it is still colored black. One possible explanation for this is that the original technology of speakers had a diaphragm with black particles on it. So as soon as a sound is amplified, it sends a charge through the diaphragm and these black particles are driven upwards. The carbon particles bouncing and touching the upper membrane of the diaphragm are responsible for creating some of the distinct sounds from our speakers that we all love so much. Speaker manufacturers must have gotten tired of their products changing color with prolonged use, combined with these black particles settling on the upper membrane of the diaphragm. So their logical solution was to color most speakers black. Another more practical belief as to why speakers are mostly colored black is that it's a hue that easily matches up with many types of decor. Walls, furniture, and clothes all often look quite well when combined with this color, which is why it's so prevalent everywhere you go. Listening to music has repeatedly scored in the top 10 pastimes in the US based on research. Nowadays, you find sound speakers everywhere. In your television, laptop, and your phone, you can't escape them. But let's take a look at how they started off. Their origins are in radio and telephone technology. The first form of a speaker was developed by Johann Philipp Reis in 1861. The German was a self-taught inventor and installed the speaker on his telephone. It was just about able to reproduce clear tones, but it could also replicate muffled speech after a few revisions. Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone, decided to try and produce an improved version of Rice's speaker. Essentially, Bell and other inventors wanted to make an electrodynamic speaker. By 1877, it was still yet to exist. But due to the desire of inventors worldwide to change this, research confirmed that it was extremely possible to make one. In particular, the work of Werner von Siemens, who came up with the idea of an electromagnetic coil-driven speaker, was a driving force in arriving at this conclusion. Why are there magnets in speakers, you might ask? Every speaker nowadays has an electric current, something the inventors were discussing would never have taken for granted at any point in their lives. When this electric current is changing, it produces a magnetic field. To make the panel of the speaker move, magnets are used to create an opposing magnetic field which creates vibrations. These vibrations are the sound we end up hearing. The bigger the magnet, the louder the speaker will be. Another inventor by the name of Thomas Edison from the US had filed a British patent for a system using compressed air for an amplifying mechanism. The first commercial electric loudspeaker saw the light of day only in 1924. The sound quality produced by the speaker was good enough for motion pictures. It took nearly 20 years for the next groundbreaking development in the world of loudspeakers. This came with the arrival of the duplex driver in 1943. It offered better clarity and coherence at high volumes, which was important in movie theaters. Fittingly, it was nicknamed the voice of the theater. The duplex driver was immediately tested by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and instantly made its film house industry standard in 1955. Until now, this loudspeaker design is still used. Indeed, the film industry does seem to put a lot of effort into its sound, and so do the theaters we watch them in. You may have noticed that these buildings often have thick curtains on the walls. These are soundproof or acoustic curtains, and both are much thicker than regular curtains. They will either consist of heavier fabrics that are tightly woven or have better quality linings. 
This means that these curtains will absorb sound and reduce the acoustic reflection off the ceiling, windows, and flat walls of the room. This ultimately creates a much better sonic experience. The carpet floors are so thick in theaters for the same reason. It helps to trap sound by providing insulation. From a practical standpoint, this carpet is also set up to prevent the sound of footsteps during film screenings. This concept of trapping sound is also the reason why putting a phone inside a cup will make the phone's speaker seem louder. Any speaker sitting or suspended in an open space projects its sound in all directions. As the speaker vibrates to create sound waves, an equal amount of energy leaves from both the front and the back. By placing a speaker in some form of enclosure, we can redirect some of the energy that comes from the back of the speaker and project it forwards. By putting the speaker in a cup, you're directing the sound more efficiently. It travels only one way, making it seem louder than what you'd hear when you take it out of the cup. Speaking of phones and speakers, ever wonder why your mobile device makes your speaker produce a buzzing noise? This can occur when the two gadgets are near one another and your mobile is trying to send and receive data. The transfer of information produces electromagnetic disturbances in the medium around the speakers. It creates noise in the audio, and as a result, you can hear the buzzing sound coming from the speaker. A simple way to protect the amazing vibe your speaker is creating for you from this irritating buzzing noise is just to move your phone away from your speaker, or vice versa. This will eliminate what is officially known as electromagnetic interference. Research across America shows that, on average, 74% of people own two or more pairs of headphones. 46% of them mention they listen to their headphones for more than two hours per day. Some choose the headphones by their looks, others by the sound quality. In either case, finding the right pair is important, since a lot of people are willing to spend over $100 on it. Headphones have become a true fashion accessory. That's why well-known figures are trying to make an impact in the headphone industry like it's the fashion industry. Music moguls Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine came up with the idea for the now world-famous Beats by Dre Headphones brand. They were walking along the Pacific Ocean one day in 2006, discussing a sneaker deal as they had an offer on the table from a major brand in that arena. After some discussions, they decided they wanted to do something they were more passionate about and landed on headphones. The duo's idea turned into a brand that was purchased by Apple in 2014 for $3 billion. It was the largest deal in Apple's history, and Beats by Dre controlled 70% of the headphone market at the time of signing. The move allowed Apple to take over the headphone space. The release of their popular wireless AirPods headphones in 2016 was another reason it happened. But how do these popular wireless headphones that many of us own actually work? These headphones rely on internal batteries to have enough power to remain wireless. Most often, they have conveniently built-in rechargeable batteries. But sometimes, they keep going thanks to standard AA or AAA batteries. They receive wirelessly transmitted signals from their paired audio sources, be it your phone or laptop. These signals are encoded by the source device and transmitted most commonly via radio frequencies or infrared carriers. The headphones receive the signal and decode it to audio. And just like that, it's music to your ears. Seatbelt on the passenger seats has a fabric loop. When put under a great amount of pressure, the stitches on the loop rip apart, so the excess fabric can assist in cushioning the passengers. The extra few inches can make a great difference within a dire circumstance. However, there isn't one on the driver's side. As the driver is so close to the steering wheel, it's safer for them not to have one. Seat belts were originally invented in the mid-19th century, though this technology wasn't brought into common practice until the 1960s. Pre-collision sensory technology has assisted with developing the safety of seat belts and other features to the next level. Effectively predicting a car's collision, the technology directs the seatbelts to automatically tighten, aligning the airbags and ensuring the brakes will be preloaded to reduce shock. Every year, 6 million car accidents occur, which explains why all cars still must continue to develop safety features, not only to alleviate accidents, 
but to protect people more effectively within their cars. The materials that make up the body of cars only started getting replaced within the last 25 years, ranging from aluminum and magnesium alloys to carbon fiber composites. These lighter materials not only enable a more fuel-efficient journey, but they also ensure that when a car is in an accident, its build provides a crumple zone. As a car hits another object, the crumple zone absorbs energy from the collision. Although this would appear to cause more damage to the car, it helps prevent impact on the passengers. Front and rear bumpers are very underrated, and due to their long history of being used in cars, you can't imagine a time we didn't use them. They were invented in the late 1800s. The bumpers evolved over the years to the point we don't even realize we have them. But they're there, quietly waiting under the outer covers, consisting of compressible foam or plastic around a rigid reinforced bar. All the windows of your car are made of glass, but the windshield is made of a shatterproof version. It's laminated, so whatever might hit it, you can be sure there won't be any shards of glass falling into the front seats. Normal glass was used up until the 1950s. As vehicles became more prominent, they made modifications to ensure safety. Airbags seem like another common feature that has always been there. In fact, they were originally invented in 1968 and were ahead of their time. They slowly gained popularity, and through safety precautions for cars, they eventually became mandatory for all cars to have only in 1998. They have since developed from just being an airbag within the steering wheel. Today, depending on the vehicle, they can be located throughout the car, ensuring all potential passengers will be protected. Crash sensors connected to an onboard computer detect when a collision occurs and trigger the bags, inflating within milliseconds and providing a cushioned safety within a blink of an eye. It can be difficult to predict the weather and even more so to determine traction on the road. In the late 1960s, anti-lock braking systems, ABS, were implemented in vehicles. Before that, they had been used in many aircraft, with designs going as far back as 1908. They soon became a necessity for all vehicles, ensuring traction is maintained on slippery surfaces and that there is complete control when braking. Today, ABS has advanced so much that the latest variations ensure further detection when there are strong crosswinds. Cruise control, initially invented in 1948, has been in constant development over many decades. Today, adaptive cruise control ensures that when the car is cruising at a constant speed and detects a slower car ahead, it will then adjust the speed to match the car in front. Other advanced variants may also ensure the car will make a complete stop once identifying that the car in front has done the same. It's easy to forget to have your high beams on when driving on the long and lonesome road for many hours. Automatic high beams are quickly becoming more common. High-tech camera modules can easily determine what type of light is passing through and help ensure when the high beam will be necessary. Although versions of automatic high beams have been around since the 1950s, they counted on light-sensitive sensors and were very unreliable. The new varieties can identify the sources of light whether it's from the sun, directly from a car's light, or even from the reflection on a sign, ensuring you won't cause issues with other drivers. It's a pain in the neck to have to ensure there isn't anyone creeping into that semi-visible corner, the blind spot, which causes around 400,000 accidents per year. Solar sensors within rear bumpers of vehicles and blind spot monitoring systems watch and identify adjacent lanes. They alert the driver that a vehicle may be in the lane beside them, whether by flashing lights on the dash or from beeping sounds. This way, they help to alleviate the many concerns the blind spot causes. 1.6 million road accidents are caused by texting and driving, and fatigue normally causes up to 10% of all car accidents per year. The driver attention monitor helps to alleviate both statistics. It works through sensors that monitor the car's movements and the amount of steering corrections to ensure the driver is paying attention to the road. When the system identifies that the driver isn't completely awake or is slightly distracted with their phone, it will prompt signals to suggest it's time for a break. Tires are among the most critical components for your car, with a close relationship with whatever path you take. 
Many safety features rely on the tires themselves for their own independent purposes. That's why it's super important to ensure the tires are always in top condition. Tire pressure monitoring systems check the air pressure of all four tires, ensuring you're aware when they need their pressure increased to avoid the risk of a blowout. The constant evolution in technologies continues to ensure you stay safe on longer stretches of the road. Lane departure warnings focus on the lines on the road, ensuring the car stays within. Whenever a car starts drifting over a line in the road without signaling to do so, the camera-based feature identifies and signals to the driver. The Lane Keeping Assist feature follows the same method of identifying when the car is intruding the bordering lane. When it gets too close, it will readjust the steering and center the car within its appropriate lane. Other features in more advanced cars have autonomous driving capabilities. The autopilot systems have taken cruise control to the next level. Not only does it allow the vehicle to steer itself in the intended lane while maintaining a set speed, but it also changes lanes when required, making the ride more and more efficient. Some safety features are only just making a trend in car models worldwide. For example, night vision using thermographic cameras to look out for pedestrians and animals nearby. It goes within the infotainment screen, facing frontwards and identifying objects from their heat signatures. It's estimated that there are over 1.4 billion cars in use worldwide. And as the world's population increases, it's expected that the number of cars will follow suit. Safety features will continue to adapt further beyond what we know of today. Infrared headlights will be further adapted to be used in conditions with poor visibility, like storms, snow, and fog. They'll be capable of enhancing the visibility of the driver in all conditions without affecting the sight of passing drivers. Driver override systems will soon be able to monitor and identify human behavior. Whether due to reckless conduct on the road or for other safety precautions, cars will soon have the functionality to take complete control of themselves, ensuring both the passenger's and the driver's safety. Augmented reality windshields are in early development already providing some indicator reflections from the dash onto the windshield. So it's quite possible that soon all necessary directions from maps and alerts will appear right in front of the driver to ensure they never take their eyes off the road. Airbags will soon not only just be used within a car to ensure the passenger's safety, they will also activate from the outside of the car once they identify a definitive collision. The airbags will inflate outwards, covering the entire outside of the car and drastically reducing its impact. It may be so advanced that the bodywork of the car won't even need to be buffed out. The future technology of cars is expected to be so progressive that the cars themselves will have their own form of communication, not with human drivers, but with other cars. Just imagine cars communicating and sharing information as they identify roadblocks, issues on the road, or disruptive weather patterns. It will all ensure the most efficient and safest route possible. Road and construction workers are usually dressed in orange because the bright orange hue is visible even in bad weather. It's the most effective color to attract attention and alert people. No wonder lots of safety jackets and traffic cones are orange as well. The stop sign has an eight-sided shape to help drivers recognize it easily, even if they see it from the back. And when the signs weren't reflective yet, the octagon shape prevented drivers from confusing the stop sign with any other at night. The rumble strips on the side of the road are placed there to alert drivers who doze off behind the wheel. When their tires move over these strips, the noise and vibration work like an alarm clock. There are magnetic locks on fuel hoses at gas stations. They come in handy if someone drives away with the gas nozzle still attached to their car. In this case, the lock detaches the hose automatically. Oh, that's embarrassing. Gasoline looks like a rainbow in a puddle because it can't mix with water. It forms a thin membrane over it. When light reflects from it and the water at the same time, you've got a rainbow. A triple handle on a jerry can is there to make it easier for two people to carry it and distribute fuel evenly. Gas cans often have a second hole that actually needs to be uncapped too before you pour the gas. The air passage will prevent it from pouring out, so no more fuel waste. Most gas cans have two holes with caps, a bigger and a smaller one. You're supposed to uncap the smaller hole before pouring gas inside the bigger one. 
It'll prevent the liquid from glugging and spilling all over your clothes and the ground. Another little thingy we often neglect is a point on an ointment cap. Most tubes are usually sealed with a plastic film or a foil, and opening it with your fingernails isn't the best idea. A point easily opens even the most safely sealed tube. You can use most screwdrivers together with a wrench to create more torque. Just place the wrench over the handle of the screwdriver. This way, you'll need to apply a lot less force than before. You'll also be able to get to hard-to-reach areas more easily. They install cameras in shops, banks, and hospitals to monitor everything. If something happens, you can call the police or rescuers. The camera really helps to solve a lot of problems. Why are there no cameras on planes? The crew keep order on the plane, but they won't be able to do anything if something serious happens. Besides, there's nowhere to run on the plane. During the flight, the cameras are useless, and after the flight, the words of the passengers work ideally instead of cameras. So, if cameras do no good, then why spend money on them? Water is great at cleaning stuff because it has triangular molecules. They're made of one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms, um, H2O. Such molecules have slightly different charges on their opposite sides, pretty much like magnets. That's why water easily sticks to other molecules, including those that make up dirt. Lots of private houses have triangular-shaped roofs because this allows rain, snow, and fallen leaves to slide off the slope. If all this stuff piled up on top of your house, one day your roof would collapse. When a storm is coming, clouds seem to turn dark, but it's just an illusion. Thin clouds on a sunny day let the light through easily. They also scatter all the colors of the light spectrum. This makes us perceive the clouds as white. But the thicker the clouds are and the more water droplets they contain, the less light they let through and the darker they look. A good doorknob is the one made of brass, bronze, or some copper alloys. These metals have an anti-germ effect. Bacteria spread way slower on them. They also get rid of germs pretty fast, within a couple of hours. Nope, it doesn't mean you don't have to wash your hands. Diamonds have such symmetrical shape to show you their brilliance. Initially, the gems aren't so beautiful. They go through several stages of cutting and then become pieces of elegance. Most of these stones have a round shape with slightly pointed corners. Diamonds shine the brightest in this shape. Why are there two holes in the socket? The left hole is neutral, the right hole is not, and the gap underneath is ground. Electricity needs to flow through the chain. The current flows from the hot slot, passes through your phone charger, for example, and then goes through the neutral hole. Ever wondered what that small pocket on your jeans is for? People used to wear watches on chains. That small pocket was meant for it. Now, almost no one wears such a watch, but the pocket remains. You can still keep something small in there, like a ring. In London, there are some poles that look like street lamps, but there are no bulbs. Well, their official name is stink pipes, and they're a thing of the past now, but they used to come in handy back in the 19th century. These hollow poles would vent away the air and explosive gases with bad smells to prevent, shall we say, unwanted consequences. Most kitchen shears have metal plier-like teeth in the middle. Between the handle grips, they can help you crack nuts, crab shells, and other tough products. You can also open jars and bottles or remove herb stems with their help. Leather often looks dull to the eye because it's covered with itsy bitsy scratches and scrapes. They scatter the light that hits the material. When you coat your shoes in a layer of wax, you fill these tiny crevices. The surface becomes smoother and the rays of light bounce off it more evenly. That's why the leather looks shiny. Highlighters are filled with a special semi-transparent fluorescent ink that can glow in dim light. Yellow and light green hues are the most popular because they don't prevent you from seeing the text after black and white photocopying. Photocopiers perceive yellow and light green marks as very pale and don't print them. They make magnets shaped as a horseshoe because this increases the magnetic force. The colors matter too. The blue part indicates the south pole, the red part, the north pole. The two poles work simultaneously and increase the attraction force. The dime-sized holes in elevator doors is actually a keyhole. If the doors get stuck, an operator can open them manually thanks to this hole. They'll just insert a special key. 
The tiny hole in the airplane window is there to balance air pressure. The window has three layers. The outer pane is extremely sturdy. It can withstand air pressure differences during takeoff and landing. The inner pane, which is the closest to you, is made of cheaper materials. It prevents potential damage to the window. The hole itself is in the middle pane. It not only balances the pressure, but also prevents the window from fogging. Escalator brushes are there for your safety. They don't allow you to come too close to the edge of the escalator. This way, your clothes won't end up between the steps. You see the sun as yellow or orange. Because the atmosphere of our planet scatters such colors as blue, green, and violet. This is also why the sun looks warmer at sunrise and sunset. Go shopping for some oranges and I'm sure you'll get them in a red mesh bag. You'll rarely see them lying around without one of those. It's pure marketing, and that color isn't a random choice. When packed in a red mesh bag, oranges appear more orange, fresher, and more appealing to you. So, you're more likely to buy them, right? Lemons are usually sold in green mesh bags for a similar reason. If you pack them in red, they'll appear more orange. Green goes better with yellow and makes those lemons stand out. Mattress manufacturers make a limited number of different mattresses, and the only way to make them look different is to come up with a fancy stitching pattern. Two mattresses of two different companies might be the exact same quality, but cost differently. Most people will never know it and will decide that different patterns mean something in terms of quality. So, when shopping, don't mind the pattern at all. Almost all hotels have white bed sheets. They choose this color specifically to show how high their standards of cleanliness are. The whiter and brighter the sheets are, the more luxurious the hotel seems. It's much easier to see dirt and stains on white linen. It's like proof that you've checked into a clean room. You just spent the entire morning running errands up and down the street, and you finally stopped to treat yourself to a cup of coffee. You enter the nearest coffee shop, place your order, and notice that actually, you really need to use the bathroom. It's a regular-looking public one with multiple stalls. As you pick yours, the one in the middle, you get inside and your mind starts to wander. Why on earth do bathroom doors have a half-inch gap between the door and the lock? And why on earth do they have a huge gap between the door and the floor? Can we have a drum roll for this moment, please? Well, my friend, there is not only one specific reason why public bathroom doors have so many gaps in them, but rather several. Public toilets are designed to make people spend as little time there as possible. You aren't supposed to feel comfortable or at home. So the design would have to reflect this notion. Here come the gaps. In some bathrooms, gaps are so big that users may even feel self-conscious about doing their business out of preoccupation that the rest of the people standing in line will see them. Then there's the matter of pricing. Making custom doors can be a heavy burden for the people building public toilets. This would mean understanding exact measurements so that doors would always fit the mold of the stalls it's supposed to be installed into. Now, not all the gaps in public bathrooms are necessarily the same size. They may vary, even if this variation is small and often unnoticeable. So, these gaps actually help to reduce the margins of errors and to turn production more cost-effective for the people financing them. In case a door comes wider or more narrow than it should, the gap regulates the differences and allows for their installation anyway. There is also the case of air circulation. The last thing you want to do in a public bathroom is to trap odors. So you need a little space under and between the doors to allow the air to flow. Finally, the gaps are a big safety measure. It can always allow for people on the outside to see if someone inside a stall isn't feeling too okay and maybe needs some help. And what about that extra hole in the upper part of the sink? It has a name and everything. The overflow hole. And it's designed to keep the sink from flooding. So, in case someone forgets and keeps the faucet going for too long, or the sink gets clogged and water can't drain down from the main drain hole, the overflow hole comes in to save the day. Let's say it buys you a little time before you have the entire bathroom floor flooded. Have you ever noticed how satisfying closing the door of a car can be? Car manufacturers devote a great deal of time to designing these sounds. Studies have shown that they create a perceived sense of quality in the buyer. It all begins with the primary material. 
While older cars used to be made with heavier materials, car doors nowadays are produced with lighter tin, which can make a rather unpleasant metallic sound once you shut them closed. So car companies employ sound engineers to ensure that there is the exact amount of foam, mats, and tin in a car's composition to make the most comforting sound possible. And what about those tiny dots on the top of your car's front window? The pattern of these little black dots minimizes distractions for your eyes. This black part, also known as frit, normally gets warmer than the clear parts, which prevents the windshield from deforming. And no, the tab under your rearview mirror is not made only for the purpose of hanging fluffy dice or aromatic-pleasing air fresheners. It's actually a switch that allows you to adjust the position of the mirror depending on the time of day. Flip it one way, and it's the daytime driving mode. Flip the other, and you're ready to drive safely during nighttime as it tones down the glare coming from headlights of the cars behind you. Next time you head out to the supermarket, make sure to keep this in mind. In case you don't have a coin to unlock these shopping carts, there is a well-kept secret that can help you out. If you have your house keys on you, check for a rounded key head. If you happen to find one, try using it to unlock the cart. It should fit perfectly in there, replacing the need to carry coins around. Because if we're being honest, who still has them? Elevators. If you want to ride them on your terms and your terms only, make sure to try something out. Most elevators have a secret button combination you can use to skip all the other selected floors and go directly to the one of your choosing. This might work out, especially on those days when you press 13, but you wanted to press 33. On most elevators, this works once you simultaneously press the closed door button together with your floor number. This should help you get to your floor without stopping. Some elevators require you to double-press the selected floor numbers, as double-pressing will often cancel the previously made request, while other elevators require you to hold the open door button and then double-press the buttons of the floors you'd like to cancel. Now, to stay out of trouble, it's best not to cancel the floors of the other people in the elevator. They won't take it kindly. Also keep in mind that there are elevators that might not have this function. Now, for honey lovers out there, go ahead and raise your hand. If your pot of golden honey is crystallized, know that it is actually a good sign. Crystallized honey means that it hasn't been pasteurized, which means better product quality. With a decrease in temperature, the natural ingredient of honey, also known as glucose, will make it crystallize. Now, try making the best of it. To add some texture to your oatmeal or toast, add a layer of crystallized honey and enjoy nature's sugar. And if you don't like crystallized honey, plop it in the microwave for a minute or two. Ah, winter and fall. You know what this means, right? Sweater weather. But there's nothing more annoying than wearing your beautiful wool sweater and itching yourself all the way through it. Actually, I can be more annoying than that, but let's talk about itchy sweaters. To keep this from happening again, here's the secret. Turn your sweater inside out and soak it in cold water. Add 2 or 3 tablespoons of vinegar and let it sit for a while. Then, drain the water. Now, while the sweater is still wet, massage a generous amount of hair conditioner into the fibers of the wool. After letting it soak in the hair conditioner for about 30 minutes, gently press the excess water out of the wool and leave it to dry flat on a towel. There you go! No more itchy sweater! Any fast food restaurant you go to will hand out small paper cups for customers to fill with their ketchup, mustard, or barbecue sauce. But if you're eating some chicken nuggets or trying to dip your burger into the cup, there's always that bit of sauce that seems impossible to reach. Next time, try unfolding the cup. It'll turn into a small paper plate, and this way, you'll get all the ketchup you poured in the first place. Padlocks used in outdoor environments should be clean and lubricated every three months. Regular lubrication will help prevent padlocks from freezing in cold weather conditions. Look for the tiny hole on the bottom of the lock. Then pour oil into it, and there you go! It opens again. One thing we often neglect is a point in an ointment cap. These pointy surfaces were designed to help us break the tinfoil protection of the ointment tube. You just turn the cap over and break the ointment seal with its own cap, and there you go. After a long day of work, all you really need to do is a bubble bath. You turn on the hot water and let it run for a few minutes. You might even light a candle and pour some essential oils into the water. 
Then, in comes the liquid soap. You stir the water until the entire surface of the tub water is crammed with bubbles and make your way in. The bubbles in a bubble bath have a fundamental primary function. Their job is to preserve the water's temperature, just so you can have warm water for longer. Do you have sweaty feet? Weird question, I know. But if you're one of these people, here's some good news. All is not lost. Try putting a dry tea bag inside your shoes and storing it in a dry place for a while. The tea bags will absorb the humidity and the smell off the soles of your shoes. So here I am thinking, shouldn't we have learned these things in school? Well, either way, if you learned something new today, make sure to tell us about it in the comments below. Various types of cheese have holes for a reason. For example, Swiss cheese is made with special bacteria that produce carbon dioxide. As the CO2 is emitted, it blows like bubblegum, leaving tiny craters, also known as cheese eyes. Then the cheese is cooled down, but the holes stay in place. Over 40 billion Oreos are made every single year. It's the world's most popular manufactured cookie. The geometric design stamped onto these cookies has the Nabisco logo, the symbol of European quality, surrounding the word Oreo. William Turnier created the chocolate cookie design we see today back in 1952. If you use reusable bottles, you probably know that sometimes they smell. Even if you only use it for regular water, it still smells. But it's not the water that smells, it's the microorganisms in it. If you drink water from a bottle, the particles of your saliva and sweat stay in there. Those bacteria start to build up in the bottle, causing the smell. So, if you choose reusable bottles, make sure to wash them every day to prevent those bacteria from building up. After washing, let it dry completely before using it again. Not only are the jeans blue, but the police officers' uniforms as well. The first official police officers appeared in the 19th century in London. They were given a blue uniform to contrast with the red and white uniform that military workers had already been wearing. Two decades afterward, the police force was adopted in the USA, and they followed the patterns. The uniform is still blue nowadays because it proved to be a good color. It's not that visible in dark hours, and police officers can observe things and people staying unnoticed. Also, stains aren't that visible on dark material. And, well, everyone knows that police officers wear blue and they're recognized it. So, why change that? Baby carrots are tiny, and unlike regular carrots, wet. Not unlike baby humans. Baby carrots aren't some special sort of carrot. They're actually made of regular carrots by cutting off the skin and outer layers and then polishing them to look that pretty. The problem is, they can't retain moisture. A regular carrot retains some water inside because of the layers that lock it in. Once they're chopped out, baby carrots can dry out easily. So they usually sell them in bags with some water inside. Jeans have metal rivets, and they're there from the very beginning. Jacob Davis, the man who made the first pair of jeans, added copper rivets to spots where pants are more likely to rip, flies and pockets, to make them stronger. Today, they have more of a decorative purpose, since they are distinctive and traditional for jeans. Another special thing about jeans is those tiny pockets they have that seemingly serve no purpose. Well, maybe it's true now. But years ago, when many cowboys were wearing jeans, the pocket was made specifically to keep a pocket watch there. Also, back then, a pair of jeans had just four pockets. That tiny pocket, the watch pocket, two big pockets in front, and just one pocket in the back. Car headrests are all about comfort, and detachable headrests are all about safety. If you pull the headrest out, you'll see two sturdy metal bars. If you ever get locked or trapped in a car, you can use the bars to smash the window and get out. Those little red spots you sometimes see after you crack an egg are nothing to be worried about. Tiny blood spots can be caused by a small rupture in a blood vessel of a hen as it was laying the egg. Eggs with these blood spots are safe to eat, but that spot can be removed if you want. It won't affect the taste of the egg. Oh, that's comforting. 
Hidden within the Toblerone logo of the mountain is the image of a bear standing on its hind legs, about to eat that yodeler over there. No, not really. This is because bears are a big part of Bern, one of the biggest cities in Switzerland where the founder created the triangular chocolate tree. Toblerone is also a play on the founder's family name, Tobler, and the Italian word Torone for honey and almond nougat. The space below a cup of noodles is there to protect the noodles during transport. This technique is called a middle suspension. Not only are they protected better in their styrofoam cup, but it also helps those noodles soften more evenly and quickly. Even though you might have noticed that the hole on the barrel of ballpoint pens has no purpose, it does. It's called a venting system, which helps the ink flow more smoothly. This way, an even amount of air pressure is created inside and outside the pen, allowing the ink to flow into the point easily. It's not an accident that soy sauce bottles have two spouts. The sauce is liquid, and it flows out of the bottle pretty quickly once you turn it over. Most Asian food lovers will admit they've spilled it at least once in a lifetime. That's why nowadays, restaurants prefer serving soy sauce in special bottles that have two spouts. This design allows you to control when and how much sauce will come out. Just put your finger on one spout while you pour the sauce through another. If you press your finger tightly to the spout, the sauce will stop flowing, and if you remove your finger, it will flow again. And please do not remove your finger in a restaurant. It will freak everybody out. You've probably noticed that train and bus seats are covered in fabrics with weird patterns. Any idea why? They use these patterns to cover any germs and stains on the seat. Oh boy! The brighter the color and the more patterned it is, the harder it will be for a passenger to notice any stains and get grossed out. Also, the patterns are usually so ugly that no one even wants to look at them for long enough to spot any stains. So yeah, the pattern is there to make you look away, and if you look, to make it less noticeable. No bus will ever have plain white seats, that's a guarantee. The middle tab on soda cans can be flipped around. You can slip a straw in place so you don't have to hold it up your mouth. This stay-on tab replaced the pull ring tab created in the early 60s. You remember those, don't you? Those could be quite sharp and easily discarded where they could be a menace for others. Now you can pop your straw straight into one. Also means you can produce some bubbles and make a mess like a 3-year-old. Sometimes, when you purchase an article of clothing, you receive a plastic baggie with an extra button and a swatch of fabric. While the fabric is clearly used to patch holes, it can also be used to test the effects of various cleaners on certain surfaces. It's handy, too, to test wash cycles before using them to wash the whole garment. Escalators have those fluffy black brushes for a similar reason that some have yellow lines on their steps to try and deter people from getting too close to dangerous places. People don't always take notice, and sometimes clothing can drape close to the point where the step meets the edge or skirt. The brush is a little barrier to help prevent this from happening. They can also catch bits of fluff and prevent other small things from falling down into the gaps. Those takeaway containers most associated with Chinese restaurants are designed to not only carry your food home, but to store it in the fridge. They double as a plate, as you can eat straight out of them and don't have to worry about dirty dishes. Yay! They were actually patented way back in 1894 to transport freshly shucked oysters and were known as oyster pails. They were later adapted to use as leak-proof containers for food. Ever wondered why coins have those little ridges along the edge? It's a leftover from earlier times when they were worth more. Counterfeiters could easily file the edges off to sell as gold or silver coins to make some profit. The ridges were created so it was much easier to tell which of the coins had been altered. It's not needed today, but the coins still have that altered style. All crackers and some cookies have holes to make sure the final product has the right texture. These teeny tiny holes allow steam to escape, so your crackers and cookies won't snap. If it weren't for these holes, also known as dockers, steam would build up inside the tree, and the final result might have been scrumptious, but it would have been rather oddly shaped. Dogs like to walk in circles before snoozing because they inherited this behavior pattern from their ancestors. 
There were no special doggy beds back then, so most pooches would have to push down tall grass to make a sort of snoozing spot. Plus, as a bonus, those movements scared off all the critters lurking in the vegetation. Donuts are ring-shaped for a similar reason. If they hadn't had holes right in the center, the dough there would have always been undercooked. By the way, they're often associated with the police, because back in the 1950s, donut shops were among the only places open late. They were a perfect place for police officers to grab something to eat and even deal with some paperwork during the night shift. Your jeans are blue on the outside and white on the inside because of a smart way to weave the fabric. The warp thread is dyed, while the weft thread has no color. It's just white. This way, manufacturers reduce the amount of dye needed for each piece of clothing. And they're still dyeing to make the jeans. iPhones. We all love them, and we can't live without them. But did you know, there are a lot of features that seem as though they are hidden in plain sight. Let's find out how you can use your iPhone to the max. First, the newest iPhones have this line at the bottom of the screen. It's for you to have multiple apps running. And if you need to quickly switch, just slide left or right on it and find the app you need. Here's an easy trick. You can take a screenshot on your iPhone by just tapping twice with your finger on the back of the phone. First, open up Settings, then go to Accessibility, Touch, Back Tap. You can apply it for various options, such as a screenshot, mute, home, lock screen, and many others. And you can choose from the same range of options to apply to your triple tap, too. Let's test it out. Nice. Speaking of screenshots, have you ever been annoyed trying to scroll and screenshot long web pages? Well, now you can get it all with only one press. Take a screenshot of a web page as usual, and when you see a page icon in the lower left corner, tap it. Switch from screen to full page mode, tap done, and now you can save the PDF to files. And here's a quick tip for taking more professional photos. You can go to settings, then camera, then grid to enable a grid that will appear when you take a photo. It can help you center your photos for a better composition. By the way, your camera roll doesn't just store your lovely photos. Tap select in the right upper corner and then tap any photo you need. In the lower left corner, you'll see a square with an arrow. Go for it. Scroll down and see what you can do. Add it to an album, duplicate it, or even hide it from prying eyes. Now, what if you're more into videos? You can massively improve your video quality with these simple steps. Go to Settings, Camera, Formats. Choose High Efficiency Camera Capture. Then go back to the menu, record video, and select 1080, 60 frames per second, or whichever setting you prefer. What about music? To make your music sound better, go to Settings, Music, EQ, and select Late Night. Now you don't need those pricey headphones with noise cancellation. But of course, try out all the other settings too to see which one you like best. Here's a way to make your note drawings nice and smooth, even if you don't have a stylus. As you finish your drawing, don't lift your finger yet and instead hold it for a second. The iPhone will automatically straighten those edges out. We live in a multilingual world, but translation apps can be a bit clunky for chatting with foreign friends. Well, not anymore. The new conversation mode in Translate can split the screen into two parts, detecting the language that's being spoken on one side of the screen and translating it to the other side. 11 languages are supported in total. And yeah, it perfectly works offline, so your conversations are sure to stay completely private. Speaking of communication, here's a couple nice tips for your message app. First, you can make a shortcut for your email to save time typing it. Go to Settings, General, Keep, and then select Text Replacement. Tap the plus button and type your email. Make any shortcut, two question marks for example, and you're good to go. Notice you can make these kinds of shortcuts for any long phrase you want. Very efficient. But what if you're using foreign words and you want to be accurate with your spelling? Many letters have those hidden symbols that you're looking for. If you hold your finger on a letter, you'll see them. Now you can type in any exotic language, respecting all the characters. 
Let's say that you're in the middle of writing a long essay of a message, but accidentally delete the whole thing. What do you do? It's easy. Just shake your phone, and it'll activate the undo typing function. Now, if you want to protect your privacy, this one is for you. Let's go to Settings, Privacy, Location Services, scroll down, tap System Services, and choose Significant Locations. Normally, it's set to On, which means your phone knows not only where you live, but also where you work, where your favorite supermarket is, and other places you visit frequently. If that makes you feel uncomfortable, just turn it off. There may be really few viruses for iPhones, but you're never fully protected from juice jacking. If you don't want to be the one whose data is accidentally leaked, public chargers are a no-go. Airport, cafe, public transport, none of them are 100% safe, especially a USB charger. A good old adapter won't ever let you down. One of the most frequent problems of all iPhone users is when you run out of memory. Sometimes, even if you delete the photos, there's still not enough space. Go to Settings, General, then iPhone Storage, and make sure that recently deleted photos are actually deleted. If not, press on Photos, and then Empty. The other most common problem we all face is battery life. External battery all the time, here's a few simple suggestions to extend your iPhone's battery. First, to state the obvious, turn off background apps. When you open an app up but then swipe away from it, it's still running in the background, draining battery power. While you're on your home screen, just swipe up from the bottom and hold for a second like this. Then swipe each app up to turn it off completely. Another major source of battery drain is widgets, since they're always running as long as you have them activated. Reducing the number of passive widgets you're running can help extend your battery. Obviously, playing sounds uses up your iPhone's power, but even when you're on silent mode and vibration is on, the vibration setting can still drain quite a bit. You can go to Settings, then Sounds and Haptics to change the sound and vibration settings. For maximum longevity, put your phone on. You can also disable your hotspot, unless you're sharing cellular data. Wi-Fi doesn't have to be on 24-7 either. When it's active, your phone is constantly searching for hotspots to connect to. And you can keep your Bluetooth off whenever you aren't using a wireless headset. There's actually a menu you can go to to get a more accurate view of your phone's battery. Go to Settings, then Battery, and you can see a full breakdown of your phone's power usage and which apps are using the most. Here's also where you can activate Low Power Mode for those extreme cases when you just need to make that last 5% really count. Now we're living in the future! I hope you enjoyed these tips and found them useful. Thanks for watching. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share